open the file artificiallighting.max. In this 3ds Max scene, we basically continue from where we left off in the previous part, so the scene has V-Ray physical cameras and a V-Ray sun. If we press Shift Q, we will get this render. The only light source in the scene is the sunlight, the V-Ray sun, and also our background cast light, but this is something that we will explore in the next part where we will talk about the materials. Let's first add the necessary layers to improve our render. I don't include them in the file I give you because if you are using older versions, they may not be recognized, so I want all of us to start from the same base. So, let's add the exposure layer and make the contrast 0.1 and reduce the highlight burn. As far as the rendering settings are concerned, I am using the progressive image sampler and I have set to do 5 minute test renders. This means that there will be a lot of noise in our renders, but we don't care at this point. We want to produce quick renders to see how the lights work and once we complete the scene, we will increase the settings to produce a clean render. The end result should look something like this. So our next step is to place the artificial lights. When I say artificial lights, I mean to add lights in the ceiling, in the pendants, and to turn the floor lamp on. The V-Ray light is a light source that is used to create physically accurate area lights of different shapes like plane, sphere, etc. The first V-Ray light we will place is the one in the ceiling uh, track lights. In general, when we want to place a light, it is easier to isolate the object so that we don't get confused by the projection lines of the other objects in the scene. To do so, select the recessed lights, right-click and choose Isolate Selection. In the viewports now, we only see the recessed lights. Click in the top view to activate it and press Alt-W to maximize the viewport or hit this button. Go to the command panel, click on the Create tab, choose Lights, click on the Photometric drop-down list and select V-Ray. Choose V-Ray Light from the Object Type rollout. Go to the top view, click hold and drag diagonally to create the V-Ray light. It doesn't matter whether the V-Ray light fits exactly in, since we will adjust its size through the Modify tab. So, with the V-Ray light selected, go to the Modify tab, zoom in if necessary, and then use the arrows next to the length value to adjust the length of the V-Ray light. Or, when you know the desired dimensions, just type them in. Let's make the width 75 cm and the length 2 cm. And if necessary, enable the Select and Move command and move the V-Ray light to the correct position. Now that we placed the light in the top view, we need to go to the front view and correct it there as well. So, we need to minimize this window to see all four viewports Right click in the front view to activate it and to maximize this viewport now. Zoom out if necessary to find the V-Ray light and drag it, elevate it using the Y axis, the green arrow. Lift it to be placed right above the lower end of the recessed track. Let's return to all four windows. Now that we have placed the first V-Ray light, I would like us to create copies for the other recessed lights. How do we make copies in 3ds Max? Select your object, which is the V-Ray light in our case, hold the Shift key and drag the mouse. When you leave the cursor, the Clone Options dialog box appears. We have three options. By choosing Instance, an interchangeable clone of the original is created, which means that if you modify one of the two lights, 
the other one is modified simultaneously. If you choose copy, a separate clone from the original is created, modifying one V-ray light has no effect on the other. Finally, the reference method creates a clone dependent on the original up to the point when the object is cloned, changing parameters for modifiers that were applied to the object before the object was referenced will change both objects. However, a new modifier can be applied to one of the reference objects and it will affect only the object to which it is applied. I know that this sounds like I'm speaking a different language right now, but I will come back to the clone option later on when we will see the modifiers I mentioned, and that will clear it up. So for now, just keep in your mind only the copy or instance options. In our example, we want to choose instance since we want both lights to have the same attributes and click OK. If necessary, zoom in and move the V-Ray Light 002 to position it properly. Now, select those two lights and create an instance for the other two recessed lights. And now, let's place the last two. Right-click anywhere in the viewport and select and isolate to end the isolation mode and return to the full screen. Moreover, return to all four viewports. Press Shift-Q to produce a render. We can see the very lights which they look like uh, illuminated boxes. We have said that uh, we can come here to the layers, select the lens effects, go to the properties and enable bloom glare effect. A glow is added to our lights, making them look more realistic. In order to see the glare of a light in the V-Ray lights uh, properties in the modify tab, we need to have the option invisible disabled. If you enable invisible, the V-Ray light will cast light but the shape of the light is no longer visible. The multiplier controls the intensity of the light. The default value is 30. If we type 60, we will double the intensity. While if we type 15, we will reduce it in half. I will remind you that since they are instances, I can only adjust one of them and the others are automatically adjusted. Go to the mode setting. When here it says color, you can click to the color field and select any color you want for your lights. Personally, I always choose temperature instead of color. And I love warm lighting, so I usually set my lights to 3500 Kelvin or to 4000 Kelvin. But now it's good to also add the white balance layer so that our render is not that orange. That's better. I think we are good for now. We may adjust them more later on, but for now we are good to move on to the next light source, which is the lights we have to add to the pendants. Let's select them and isolate them. Maximize the top view and zoom in to one of the two lights. Go to the command panel, click on the Create tab, choose Lights and choose V-Ray Light. These lights have a spherical shape, uh, cylindrical, so here where it says Type, instead of Plane, we will choose Sphere. Go to the top view, click, hold and drag to create the V-Ray light. 
and now our very light has the shape of a sphere. As we said before, it doesn't matter if you draw it randomly since we will now adjust its size through the Modify tab and make the radius 1.3 cm. Reposition it in the top view and then go to the front view to place it there correctly. Create instances and place them to the remaining lights. And let's also make them 3500 Kelvin as we did with the other lights we had. While we are doing our testing, it is useful instead of rendering the full viewport to use the region method to render only the part of the scene that we are working on. This way we save rendering time. Press F10 or this button to open the render setup dialog box. Go to the Common tab, and the Common Parameters rollout, go to the Area to Render section, click on View, and select Region. Adjust the Region box, using the handles in its corner to include the two pendants. Produce a render. If we want to turn off a light, simply disable this checkbox next to the On option in the general rollout. The next step is to place a light in the floor lamp. Select the floor lamp, right click and choose Isolate selection. This floor lamp is a group, which means that it consists of two parts. One part is the base with the upper metal fixture and the second part is the interior of the lamp where the light is supposed to be placed. You can understand when an object is a group because when you select it and go to the name and color field, it shows the name of the object with bold letters. So bold letters mean group. To open a group and see the parts it consists of, select the floor lamp and go to the menu Group and choose Open. Now, if I select the base of the lamp and randomly move it, you see the other part it consists of. Let me hit Undo to take it back to its original location. So, we are interested in the interior part of the lamp, this one, which we basically want to convert it to a light. Select it and choose Isolate Selection so that the remaining floor lamp won't confuse us. Go to the Command Panel, click on the Create tab and select V-Ray Light. Randomly draw a V-Ray Light. With the V-Ray Light selected, go to the Modify tab, go to the General Rollout and to the Type setting, click on Plane and choose Mesh. The V-Ray Light automatically gets a boxed shape. Go to the Mesh Light rollout and click on the Pick Mesh button. Click on our shape, the interior of the lamp. The V-Ray Light automatically converts to the shape we selected and we also automatically return to the full scene. With the V-Ray Light selected, let me right-click and choose Isolate Selection so that you can see and understand the shape of our V-Ray Light. So when we use the Mesh Type, our V-Ray Light can get any shape as long as we first have modeled the shape object we want and then we just click on it. The settings are the same to the ones we have already seen, so let's select it and go to the Modify tab, select Temperature, and type 3500 Kelvin. And let's do a region render. Mm -hmm. 
That's awesome. The very lights we have seen so far cast light uniformly in the scene. So what happens when we want to give shape to the distribution of the light, like when we have spotlights? In these cases, we need to use the V-Ray IES lights. IES stands for the Illuminating Engineering Society, which has defined a file format for describing the distribution profile for a light. The information in those files, like the shape of the light's cone or the steepness of the light's fall-off, are gathered through lab experiments and we can use the IES files in 3D applications to create accurate representations of light bulbs. Go to the front view. Select one of the pendants, right-click and choose Isolate Selection. Go to the Command Panel, click on the Create tab and select Lights and choose V-Ray IES from the Object Type Rollout. Click and drag to place the V-Ray IES light below the pendant. When you leave the cursor, the light's target is placed. Select both the light and the target, go to the top view and drag them to the correct position. Make an instance to place to the other light and end the isolation. Let's make a region render. So, if we create a V-Ray IES light without loading an IES file, the light will have the shape of a sphere, as we can also see from its preview in the viewports. To load the IES file, select one of the V-Ray IES, go to the Modify tab, go to the V-Ray IES parameters and click on the None button next to the IES file. From the Open dialog box, go to the IES folder and select the arialight.ies. When we load the IES file, the preview of the light automatically changes. Press Shift-Q to render. The distribution of the light changes. Select one of the V-Ray IES lights, go to the Modify tab, scroll down, and instead of color, select Temperature and set it to 3500 Kelvin. The intensity of the lights is this one, Intensity Value. The value is set by the manufacturer. I will reduce it by half and re-render. I will now try another IES file to see how the shape of the distribution will change. Click on the area light we loaded earlier, the open dialog box appears and select the other one. Produce a render. We can't really see the shape of the light on the headboard, so we will increase the intensity. Go to the intensity value and roughly double it by setting it to 10,000. Now, it's more visible, but still pretty fainted. A trick we could do here is the following. In general, for the distribution of a light to be visible, the V-Ray IES must be located close to the surface. More specifically, select the V-Ray IES lights and drag them closer to the headboard. and also lower them. We need to go approximately here because in the spotlights is positioned there. If we think about it, the light would start casting on the headboard from approximately this height or so. So now if we render, the distribution of the light casts on the headboard, giving us a nice pattern and shadows. Clone the V-Ray IES 
to the other pendant and make them instances. As a final step, let's also put the lights on this track over here. As we said before, I will place them closer to the wardrobe so that I can see the shape of the light. Let's render the full viewport. In V-Ray 5, there was introduced a really, really cool feature called V-Ray Light Mix. If you are using an older version, I advise you to upgrade since this feature is a great time saver. Go to the Render Setup window and to the Render Elements tab. In the first part of the rendering settings, I told you that I mainly use two render elements, the V-Ray Denoiser and the V-Ray Light Mix. So if you don't see it here, click on the Add button and choose V-Ray Light Mix. Let's go to the Render Setup. Go to the V-Ray tab, to the Frame Buffer Rollout and click on Show Last VFB to open the latest rendering we produced. I told you that we can adjust the intensity of the lights and their color through their properties in the Modify tab. But this is not the only way. V-Ray Light Mix allows us to adjust all the lights of our scene. More specifically, while our render is being calculated or once it's cleared, it doesn't make a difference, go to the layers and select the source light mix. At the properties you see, a list of all the lights in our scene. If our lights are instances, you will see only one of them here. Now, it's good when we create a light to give it a proper name so that we can easily identify it in this list. Because now I can't really understand which is which. A quick way to understand it is to uncheck it. So these lights are the ones in the ceiling. We can easily turn off and on lights. If I turn off the very sun, you see that I no longer have shadows from the sun and my render got darker. The environment you see here is the V-Ray sky that was added along with the V-Ray sun. So if I also turn this off, we immediately get the feeling that it's night time now. We can also play with the intensity of the lights. Let me find the wardrobe lights and decrease their intensity. Let's say by half. We can also change the color of the lights. Let's go to the floor lamp and choose a red color. Always give it some time to recalculate it and also add the lens effects. I really love V-Ray Light Mix, uh, the V-Ray Light Mix feature. We didn't have it before V-Ray 5 uh, and now you can produce so many different lighting scenarios within the same rendering time as producing just one. So once the noise is cleared, you can start saving the render, pressing the save button and then keep changing lighting scenarios and saving them. Before that, every time we needed to adjust the intensity of a light, we had to stop the rendering process, adjust the light 
and start from scratch. Please be careful. In order for V-Ray Light Mix to work, you need to use the progressive image sampler. If you use the bucket, then V-Ray Light Mix is not available. Moreover, you need to use brute force in the primary engine. If, let's say, you use Iradian's map, then again, V-Ray Light Mix is not available. So, let me say it one more time. In order for you to use V-Ray Light Mix, you need to use the progressive image sampler with the brute force primary engine. That's all with the artificial lighting of the scene. And now, let's move on to the materials.